This is going to be my very first tutorial video. The quality will not be amazing. My editing abilities will also not be amazing. So if you have the capability to do it yourself, feel free to take these tips, make your own video, have at it. Um, this is a 40 gallon long aquarium. I've got, as you can see, the Eheim canister filter, my hang on back, my two goldfish who like to produce a lot of waste, a lot of natural gravel that I got from the hardware store. I'll do a tutorial later on on how to clean that up and prep it so it looks awesome. What you need, and what this is about, is a very easy way to clean the Eheim filter without getting all the different types of media that are mixed in there smushed together and it's a good way to keep it separate and fast way to scrub it and clean it that I discovered quite by accident. So I'm gonna get into that. So what's going to make this a magically easy trick is your kitchen. This is a, it's a double boiler or rice strainer. It sits right on top of here and normally you would steam or put vegetables in there and fill it with water. I've discovered a much more useful purpose. Mind all the bits of peas on the floor of the shells, that's from feeding these guys. Um, and a second pot, if you, if you have two or three types of uh, gravel media inside. So I've got this stuff here, which is the denitrate. I had a nitrate problem with our tap water, so I've got that in the canister filter. This is some of the extra that didn't fit in the filter with all the other media in there. And of course those ceramic pieces. So I've got three types in there as I do too. I get three types in there, and keeping them separate is a pain, but I found a way. Uh, what you're going to need is two pots, maybe three if you want a third one, not critical. Your net, strainer helps a little bit, and your bucket to siphon the water out, and a little bit of replacement water. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon enough water just to fill up this a little bit and you'll see why in a second. So you're going to want to make sure that the water you have is enough to overlap in here and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, the next step of obviously is to just disconnect your filter as normal. Start by unplugging it with the correct plug. So that's going to be this one. Verify it is the right one that you unplugged. Yes. And your typical steps of switching these little notches over to lock them closed. If you've seen any Eheim filter tutorials, you already know how to do this part. So I'm just gonna put the phone down for a second. Now you're not going to be dumping the water into the rinsing material. You're just gonna be dumping it into a bucket, of course, by releasing the spigot on the bottom and then the spigot on the top. Using the Eheim, you're gonna get you know, some kind of flowing around in the bottom there, but the water should be mostly clear. If it turns kind of brownish coming out, you waited way too long and your fish are probably sick. Um, but a little bit of dirt and debris, that's normal, that's good. Um, I just did this very recently, so there's probably not as much as there usually would be in there. So next comes the cheat part. Disconnecting the Eheim filter is pretty simple. There's four of these little clasps. I'm going to assume most of you have already watched videos on how to do this yourself, but remember when reconnecting, it's a bottom-up filter. I made that mistake the first time and had water coming out the wrong way. You're familiar with this, and here I have my three different types of media. I'll say there's still a little bit of a mix, but not as much. I've got my carbon, I've got my denitrate media there, I've got my phosphate removing layer there, my ceramics there, and my blue foamy stuff, and of course the other ground pellet, as normal. Pop that in there, this is the part you're probably used to. Now you've probably got yours configured different ways, I've seen people have more of the fluffy white, I've seen more people with more pads, I've seen people have a lot more gravel, depends on what you need. So I've got a hang on back plus the Eheim, so I don't need to have as many of these pads as some people, but whatever you find works best for your aquarium. You can use the wastewater to rinse this, it's okay, it's got some of that bacteria in there, as long as the wastewater isn't so dirty that you're just making this worse. Otherwise. Use some of that clean water. 
uh, or take some from the tank directly, but off of the top. Um, you shouldn't have to worry too much about killing the beneficial bacteria as long as you used the pre-treatment stuff. Find a nice clean place to stack these, not on the floor. I prefer to put it on top of a towel on top of the floor in this so it can drip through, get soaked up, but not get dirty. And here comes the secret. A lot of people just dump all this into a bucket and then they'll try to put it back in. I hate that, it's too messy. So what I do, and it might not work as well holding it with one hand, this is where the strainer part comes in. I pour the first top level in here. I'm going to put the phone down, finish doing that, and then show you the results. So now I've all got it in that boiler strainer. And this is it. This is also why I have a blanket. It's going to spill a little bit. Just swirl it around a little bit. Feel free to mix it up with your hands. Make sure you wash your hands first. Get any soap on your hands if you're working on a print shop. Make sure you don't have toner on your hands and anything you wouldn't want to get in the tank to begin with. You know, that kind of stuff. So why don't you thoroughly switch this around? Lift. And then. Pop it into an empty container and you're ready to do the next layer. Easiest way you'll ever, ever have to clean one of these filters. I'm going to do the next one and show you that. Alright, so I've dumped the next layer in and because I only have a thin piece of foam in between there, uh, some of those little brown ones on top did spill on top of here, but when there's only a few of them it's so much easier just reach in pick a couple pieces out, throw them in, and now you have your nice, easily separated, easily manageable, easily rinsable, and that's the best part, is just how easy it is to rinse this, because all that junk, if there is any stuff to this, is going to fall through those little strainy holes when you pick it up, and you're going to have nice, rinsed, fresh media. And you're just going to put this inside another container like that. So however many layers you have, make sure you have one extra. I need to go get another pan. Now already you can see the water is cloudy and dirty. And that's even after straining it initially in there. I'm rinsing my pads in here. You can determine whether or not you need to cut any more pads to replace them. This one looks like it's still got some life left in it. So I'm going to reuse it. The carbon one also I just cut the other day. And... This is also still mostly clear, water flows through it all right, and there's not too much gunk build up on it. Also, give it a sniff test. If it smells strongly of ammonia, don't keep it. Even if it looks clean, it's going to leach some of the phosphates and nitrates and all that crap back into the tank. You don't want to do it. You've got plenty of beneficial bacteria still on these pieces here and the rest of the media. If you have to replace a few pads, don't worry about it. Better safe than sorry. And now, I'm just going to do that final little step. Put this back in here. Sometimes these stupid handles come off. You only need one. That might, depending on how recently you've done this, have some gunk build up on it. Quick little rinse. Swish it around. And you're good. That is insanely easy. This is the easiest way I've ever had to strain or clean this stuff. And uh, I can't believe nobody's either done this before or made a video explaining to do this before, because my god, this just it's just a strainer. It's a steamer. It's a two-part boiler. It, it just makes life easy. And what you can do, I like to use a second pan that this fits on, because then I can just dump this water and still have that drip dry and it's it's fine. There's no reason to keep that in there. And then you just reassemble. Quick side mention, if you do cut your own circles of media, you want to make sure that you cut it as close to a circle as possible with no gaps because you want the water to flow through the filtration media. Otherwise it defeats the purpose. Take some of this fish tank aquarium media. It's just it's just cotton. Just clean, pure cotton. And 
rinse it a bit in whatever clean water you've got and just stuff it in these little cracks. Not too crazy tight, just enough to make a seal. Because otherwise the water's gonna rush up the sides, bypass anything you got in there, killing the point of having a filter. And that's all it takes, just a little bit around the edges, fill up the gaps. You don't wanna slow down the flow of the water too much, that'll hurt the filtration as well. You just want the water to come up, if not all through here, through something, but you want the bulk of it to kind of come up the center and the sides. Then just finish rebuilding. All right, so now we've got it rebuilt. Anywhere there's a gap, there's some of the white cotton. I get a nice sturdy layer. Um, it's a little uneven, so I'm gonna fix this a bit before resuming the video, but just for the purposes of showing you, hey, there's your filter. Uh, you put it back inside there and reassemble. We'll get to that in a second. Now you want to make sure when popping the inside through here that you don't, that these are all open because if there's one hanging over, you'll break it off very easily. Line this up, snap it on, and I'm actually going to show you another secret so that you don't have to prime the tubing. I've seen things where people will do the trick where they'll suck on the end of one of those to try to get the water flowing again, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do that. So start with your plug near where it needs to be plugged in, but do not plug it in yet. Connect the bottom and the top, but do not open the valves yet. Now one thing that annoyed me greatly about the instructions of the Eimheim filter and even how everybody talks about it is they talk about plug the intake to the siphon and plug the spreader bar to the outtake. They don't actually mention which one is the intake, but reminder, this is again a bottom up filter. so. Intake on the bottom, water goes up through the top. And now, we let water pressure do its trick. This is the secret. Open the bottom one first, and just let it sit for a minute. Just let it kind of build up. Doesn't even have to be a full minute, just enough that the pressure is pushing up into here. Then you want to open this, and then quickly plug this in. I don't know if you heard that gargle, but that was the water. Get your net ready. You don't have to, but I prefer to. Because as the water goes through, it's going to start spraying whatever's in those tubes outwards. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Pepper. Say hello. Yep. How you guys doing? And you'll see there's some brown diatoms in there I have. Just got new lighting. I haven't quite figured out the cycle of it exactly yet. Uh, but I'm going to do a video next on how to reduce that.